Support for Mission Nonprofit is provided in part by Thurston Talk. Hello, my name is Andrea Capere, and you're watching Mission Nonprofit. Each month, we connect with local organizations and agencies that are making a positive impact in our communities. October is National Disability Employment Awareness Month. To discuss this topic, we've invited representatives from the Washington State Department of Services for the Blind. We welcome Jonathan Utera, Vocational Rehabilitation Counselor at the DSB. Gloria Walling, proprietor of Oasis Cafe, Busy Bean Espresso, and Espresso Haven, and Keith Edgerton, construction, sustainability, and employee transportation coordinator at Providence St. Peter Hospital. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you for Thank having you. us. So uh, let's let's start with you, Jonathan. Mm -hmm. Tell us what you do. Sure. Um, I'm a vocational rehabilitation counselor, and um, as a counselor, uh, basically. I'm a helping professional uh, that specializes in working uh, with people with, that have disabilities. Specifically in, with our agency, of course, is people with uh, visual impairment. And um, in this capacity, basically what I do is um, coordinate the individualized services that uh, our agency would provide as well as collaboration from um, agencies out, outside of uh, um, DSB. And, um, bring that together to um, help the, the participants, the clients that we serve, um, achieve their employment goals. Employment goals are usually uh, marred with barriers uh, from, uh, the, from the visual impairment that, that they have. And so the services that we help coordinate for them help them to get over those barriers so that they can achieve those employment goals. Great. And Keith, what is it that you do for Providence St. Peter? There's a lot of titles in there. Yes, yes, as you noted, I have three titles. Um, so construction, whenever we have construction projects at the hospital, uh, additions or remodels, I help oversee those projects to make sure that uh, the public and patients are safe during that construction, because obviously we're building in an occupied building and with uh, patients you know, who could be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I also am in charge of sustainability at the hospital. So one of our core values in Providence is stewardship. And so we take sustainability uh, very seriously. And so I'm very proud to be able to help reduce our carbon footprint and our ecological footprint at the hospital when there's not construction going on or if my, light, you know, my load with construction isn't great. And my third position is employee transportation coordinator we're the largest private employer in Thurston County. So the state of Washington requires us to have someone like myself in the position where we try and reduce commute trip reduction, which is basically convincing people as single car drivers to not, to not always do that, to look for alternative forms of transportation. Great. And Gloria, you run uh, three coffee shops, is it? I do. Um, as it said in the intro, I am the sole proprietor of the Oasis Cafe, which is, uh, as it describes, a cafe. I also have two standalone coffee shops, and um, as a visually impaired, totally blind entrepreneur myself, I take uh, disability employment awareness very seriously, and I have actually worked with uh, Jonathan on several occasions in uh, helping to employ and to coach and to mentor and to intern individuals with the Department of Services for the Blind that are looking to work, that are looking to find their skills, that are looking to participate and be a part of society, contribute, of course, and to be able to take care of their families. And so one of the things I do is bring disabled individuals into the workplace and help them find their niche. And that, that's a great segue into our next question, which is what sorts of um, tasks do you set in front of your, uh, your employees? What are, what are some of the things that they do at work? Well, it depends on several things. It depends on the individual, of course, and um, the di disability. So it's really important to find something that that individual can do. And it's not as hard as it sounds. Um, 
I have a uh, employee that came to work for me in 2005 that was considered a disabled employee and is still working for me today. She has become one of my most trusted, most valued, most dependable employees and um, she just wants to work. You know, we gave her the opportunity to come in and make coffee. She, she makes coffee just like anybody else. She keeps a very, very immaculate uh, coffee stand. She has um, our, 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 one of our cleanest facilities. Um, she does the ordering. She goes online and helps place orders. Now, that isn't the same for every individual that comes to us. We have had individuals come to us that were visually impaired and the task that they do might be different. They might be running the register using a talking register. They might be assisting with unpacking shipments that come in of dried goods, stocking shelves. They might be assisting with um, making drip copy and even making espresso. So it really depends on the individual and um, the disabilities that they come in with. And again, it's really not as hard as it sounds. There's uh, support networks out there to help them and um, we of course are on staff. We have the Department of Services for the Blind to assist us with equipment and um, other issues that we might come across. We have, uh, depending on which client, <coughs> excuse me, we're helping at the time. Um, sometimes they might come in with a job coach. So it really does vary. I hope that was uh, not too much there. Oh no, that's great, thank you. Um, so Keith, you had talked about uh, transportation and sustainability, yeah. and you shared with me that you don't drive. Can you tell me a little more about that? Yeah, so in 2005, I became legally blind. So I have a degenerative disease of the retina that I've had it my entire life. Um, i am lost my peripheral vision, so I have about 17 degrees field of vision. So a person with uh, quote unquote normal vision has 180 degree field of vision. So I describe it to people as looking through uh, milkshake straws. And so it's something that's been gradual. And so when I stopped driving in 2005, um, it was probably the hardest thing that I had ever experienced. It was something where I couldn't envision how my life could work as a single parent and as a professional on how, how could I do that without driving. And fortunately at the time, I had an employer who thought I was valuable enough to keep around um, and wanted to work, work with me. And so they figured out ways to get me to project meetings. At the time, I was working for a general contractor. And now that I work at the hospital, I came into this role from sustainability into this employee transportation coordinator. And it's something where I obviously have street cred because I haven't driven in 12 <laughs> years. So when people are looking at me going, there's no way I can do this. You know, I'm a professional or I have children or I need to get groceries. They obviously don't get anywhere with me on that. And, and I, I'm really proud of how I've been able to do it. And really my story to them is something in the form of it's been a wonderful change. So there are moments where it is challenging to not drive, but for the most part, it's been an absolutely wonderful experience. And so I actually really enjoy that part of my job, um, you know, sharing with people how they can have a life where they're not always driving. And uh, so we had talked briefly, and I want to ask each of you, and I'll start with Jonathan. Sure. Um, what are some myths that need dispelling about employing people with disabilities, and maybe in particular those with limited or no vision? Sure. Um, I see. One one myth is that, um, in regards to employment, that perhaps that they only can do particular certain jobs. You know, um, there's this. A lot of people would uh, gravitate to thinking, oh, okay, well, maybe if they go to a, a, a call center, that, that's the kind of work they can do. That, that's, that's, that's such definitely a myth there uh, because really, um, it, it really comes down to uh, with the appropriate tools, equipment, and um, the skills to utilize those equipment, they, you know, they can literally pretty much do almost any job that's out there, you know. Um, um, and so that, that one myth um, right there, uh, to limited to types of jobs, that's definitely a myth. What about you, Keith? What do you think? 
for me personally, my experience in the world as a visually impaired person using a cane, I pretty much always get treated as completely blind. And I am not completely blind. And, and so that's something that's really hard for people to understand. If they're able to get past that I'm not completely blind, which sometimes they still, even when I tell them, they still can't understand that, then they think my vision is blurry. And again, my vision's not blurry. I can see clearly, I um, have good color, I just have a very narrow field of vision. And what I've learned recently is that 80 to 90% of everyone on the planet with a visual impairment has some amount of vision left. So you're really talking about 10 to 20% of the people are completely blind. And I think that's just a piece of education that's not really taught in our society that you're either totally blind or you're totally sighted. And so that's something that is really kind of a constant conversation for me when I'm out and about or I work in a building that has 1,500 employees and obviously the public and is there too with patients. And so that's something that I um, I'm really constantly dealing with. So I'm hoping a show like this can help dispel some of those myths. That's our hope. Uh, Gloria, what are, what are some myths you'd like to dispel? Well, I think the biggest myth coming from an employer standpoint is that employers, I think, are sometimes under the impression that to bring on someone with a disability, whether it be visually impaired or any other disability, I think they're afraid of the costs. I think that uh, if they were aware of the services and support networks that were out there, it would make things much easier. For example, we have had support services from the Department of Services for the Blind where they've come in and labeled products, brailled descriptions, um, taped instructions. We've had job coaches come in with some of our um, trainees that we've had on staff. Um, we've had Gosh, I can't even think, there's just numerous. There's financial assistance to get equipment, there's training on using computers. And I think uh, the biggest myth is that the employer is responsible for all of those costs. There's support networks with the Department of Services for the Blind, there's support networks for other disabilities, there's, like I said, there's job coaches, there's equipment, there's just a host of services out there and uh, employers really need to be aware of that so that they understand the cost does not always fall on them. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And so with your experience as a proprietor of businesses and as an employee, employer, um, can you share a success story? Well, um, I have had two uh, individuals come to me from the Department of Services for the Blind that we trained and assisted who have since gone on to um, become sole proprietors themselves. So they were able to come in and we were able to let them get the experience that they would not get from um, somewhere else. For example, I myself am blind, so I'm able to say, hey, look, you can do this, I can do this. I'm able to relate to them on a level that they haven't had before and to let them know this is okay, you can do this, we're gonna work around this. There's steps in place that we can take to make sure that you're safe, to make sure that you're secure, to make sure that you're confident, to make sure that you can get to and from where there's buses you can take, there's mobility training that you can get involved in and just educating them about all the possibilities and the support that's out there and uh, having them go on. Uh, we had a gentleman that came to us from Jonathan who did training in one of our coffee stands and he now owns his own facility. Um, we've also had another gentleman that again came from Jonathan who went on to have his own facility. We've had people come in to work with us that found out maybe the employment that they were seeking was not quite for them. So we were able to help steer them and help them identify some of their weaknesses and some of their strengths. And I don't want people to get the impression that a weakness is a bad thing. If you can come in and we can help you to establish some of the areas that you might need to improve in, you'd be surprised how many doors we can open up and help you to um, conquer. 
That's fantastic, and it must be really rewarding, too, to be part of that discovery process of a person learning that, um, that coffee might not be for them, but maybe television is. That's okay. my story, personally. <laughs> um, Keith, have you played a role in any success stories in your uh, position at Providence? Um, that's a good question. I think just, you know, Jonathan and Gloria to me are pointing out something that I'm now experiencing. So I was someone who did everything I could to hide my visual impairment for years and I was angry about it and I was scared to death of going completely blind and now I'm in a world of opportunity that I've learned so many ways to improve my life and what I have been exposed to is so many people like Gloria that have a wonderful, full, rich life, who are an incredible asset to our community, who make our community so much stronger. And I just feel so lucky to be someone who's um, had training through the Department Services for the Blind. Um, I run a, a nonprofit sports camp now for visually impaired and blind children to help them see that they can do anything that they put their mind to. And so my fear of going totally blind is gone. That's just not something I think about anymore. And I know that there's all these different ways to um, compensate or navigate or do things differently to still be a successful professional. And so I just hope that at my workplace when people see me walking around who didn't know I had a visual impairment, and they go, wow, you know, you can still do your job at a high level and, and be successful. So I just feel very lucky to be in this community around amazing people. And Jonathan, you have this role to mm. interact with so many lives. Mm. And apparently, you have like a direct pipeline mm -hmm. to Gloria's business. <laughs> I'm sure you have a lot of success stories mm. to share. I you know, definitely throughout the years, uh, being um, in the position uh, that I am, uh, definitely get um, get up, uh, up right in the middle of things in regards to uh, seeing people um, um, change their lives um, for the better. A lot of times, uh, we we have people that come to us um, with uh, just just a lot of uh, no hope, a lot of um, you know discouragement. And um, it's with, uh, definitely with DSB that I can uh, be a, just play a, just a small part in, in being able to um, kind of figure out the things that they may need, that they need. Our, the services that we provide are very individualized to the person. Uh, we take into account well, what their strengths and weaknesses are, definitely what their interests and their abilities, um, what's important for them within the work uh, environment. Um, we, we take a holistic approach in regards to uh, the person and, and the goal, the employment goal that they may be wanting to achieve. And uh, we tailor the services to definitely help them um, to achieve that goal. So. And with just a few minutes left, mm -hmm. let's maybe talk about what are some of the services available since it's Disability mm -hmm. Employment Awareness Month. Sure. What does DSB have available? Yeah. Uh, DSB has a full range of, of services um, that include um, definitely things like um, training um, ad adaptive skills to blindness, to visual impairment. Uh, they provide um, training for uh, mobility, being able to be independent, um, traveling from one point to another point. Um, they provide um, training with uh, the utilization of, of, of uh, assistive technology tools, uh, that they can utilize on the job, you know, or um, perhaps um, in preparation for a job. We have a lot of people that are um, get involved in, uh, in higher education and uh, vo or vocational training, and just even to participate uh, in that setting, they need the, uh, the appropriate tools, equipment, and skills to, um, to be able to do that successfully. So that's a, that's a myriad of things, but there's so much more. Job coaching, like uh, um, like um, Keith and um, Gloria had said, um, we also have. Um, a, a big component is counseling. A lot of times a major component when, when we're dealing with um, a loss of vision, uh, disability in general, is um, definitely de dealing with that loss. That's a major uh, component uh, that we can help provide um, for the individual. So it's, a, again, a myriad of services um, 
again, uh, tailored to the individual. So. Have there been any services that have been especially impactful for you, Keith, or for you, Gloria? Um, I would have to say um, I became a business owner through the Department of Services for the Blind, and um, I had always wanted to do that. I knew early on that I was going to do something entrepreneurial. Uh, I grew up in a boarding school, and uh, we had a small cafeteria there on campus, and I ran the cafeteria, and I enjoyed it. I enjoyed interacting with the people. I enjoyed the ordering, just the stocking, and the just being a part of making this happen on the campus for the people that were coming to um, pick up whatever it was that they wanted. And so when I had heard about the Department of Services and the program that they had um, called the Business Enterprise Program that would help me to be successful, it made a huge impact on my life. And because it has been so good for me, I would like to contribute to the community and make sure that others have the same opportunity that I've been afforded, whether it be doing what I'm doing or whether it be assisting them to find their niche, whether it be helping them find out what isn't their niche, mm -hmm. just being able to give back to the community and to see how these lives are impacted. I also want to say that the uh, youth program, they, they are very involved in getting to the youth when they're young and so I think that is amazing so that they can get confidence at an early age and start to get direction the sooner the better. Mm -hmm. What about you, Keith? I did uh, mobility training for a year through DSB in 2014, and I did it completely blind. So I wore fully occluded glasses, basically just glasses blacked out. And that was something that I felt like at the time I was being proactive and, and just trying to you know, make sure that I had skills as I lost more vision. And what I found is it completely transformed my life because it gave me this incredible skill set that no matter where I was in any condition, you know, weather condition or a new place, that I knew that I could get around. So you could have a, you know, a solar eclipse, it could be complete blackness, and <laughs> I was gonna get around. And it was something that I wasn't fully aware of at the time, but at the end of that training, and it was everything, roundabouts and buses and really busy streets. And my final exam was getting from one end of Seattle to the other end. And it just, it's constantly with me. It's just a skill set that I have and, and I still do need people's help once in a while in situations that may make it easier for me, but I know that I can do it and I did not have that confidence before, and I knew that I managed my life in certain situations. Before I had that training, I would avoid certain situations. So I knew, you know, oh, that's gonna be crowded. There's gonna be a lot of people there, and, and now I just don't think about that. I just plod along, and I got my cane, and it's just been such a, a relief for me, and just I'm so thankful that uh, the vocational program through the DSV, you know, offered that and, and wanted to help me. And it's a, it's a skill set that helps me in my personal life, but it also helps me in my professional life. I work in a 75,000 square foot building, and there's a lot of people in that building. And so this is something that really takes a lot of stress away from me every day. Great. Well, thank you all for coming. Any parting words mm -hmm. that you want to share? D definitely. Um, Keith, Gloria, and uh, many of the other uh, participants that have uh, we've um, definitely served uh, in the past, they're all great examples of, of, the, of our mission. And uh, our mission is um, inclusion, independence, and economic vitality for people with visual impairment. And uh, they're uh, great success stories and living um, examples of our mission. So That's all we have for you. You can see Mission Nonprofit on Channel 77 on Sundays at 4.30 p.m., Tuesdays at 7 p.m., Thursdays at 7.30 p.m., and Saturdays at 6.30 p.m. You can also catch us online at tcmedia.org. See you next time.